Wednesday, August 10th. It is Ashley Pfeiffer. I'm the maker behind Snapped AF. Am I live? Am I live? <laughs> um, I hope everyone's having a wonderful week. I wanted to share my process for my card that I shared in the Insta hop this morning. Uh, so I'm going to make a change because I used DSP initially and when I went to look at this before going live I can see it buckled a little bit. So I used some of the in color DSP and blended the heck out of it. So I'm going to use cardstock this time. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you can hear me, see me. I know I was like a minute early, but I was ready. So um, this is going to take some time. So I'm just going to get going. And I hope that uh, when you join in, you can figure out what it is I'm doing. Hi, thank you for sharing. And if not, you can catch the replay. So this is the card. So the theme for this month's Insta Hop was masking. And if you are not already aware, Stampin' Up! has masking paper. So I used some of this to create this card. I'm so disappointed that that buckled, but there's a lot of ink on this. So in trying to figure out I was playing around. So I'm like, oh, which card am I going to share? For this one, I did masking, obviously, but then I decided to draw in the lines of those birch trees. I don't know if it takes away from the blending, but they just look like some naked trees and it looked weird. I did not end up sharing this one. I love it. I don't love what I did to the leaf down here, but I could probably hide that with a bit of ribbon. But because I couldn't decide, hi, Feline. Judy, Roz, Elizabeth, hello everybody. Um, so because I couldn't decide, I finally posted it in the InstaHop group and I'm like, team, help me, I don't know which one to do. Uh, I was really feeling this one, but then I also like this one. And it's funny because this one's on DSP as well. Well, I guess it's cardstock and DSP. Uh, it's also mounted on the uh, adhesive sheets the foam adhesive it's not just a dimensional I love this one but I love this one even more because it's the window so uh one person commented and said this one I'm like thank you that's the one I was thinking too and others were like I wouldn't have been able to help you I couldn't decide so let's get on with it hi Sam so I can't even speak hi Samantha your in color club stuff is all here and ready to go for you Okay, so because this is going to take some time, I have gone ahead, I already embossed a four and an eighth by five and three eighths piece of basic black cardstock and adhered it to my card base. Boy, the words are hard. I have got, we're going to use Orchid Oasis this time instead of Starry Sky, but I'm only putting it on the inside. Sorry, dogs are in here and they don't want to be. Oi, off you go. So we'll use Orchid Oasis. I always want to say Orchard. And we're going to do some Stamparatus stamping because this took about three tries to get it that dark. But I love the Say Boo and Scary On. And how many years have I been saying I'm not doing Halloween cards? But I felt like it just, it masking needed this, right? So we'll set that aside. You might be thinking, oh, but you have to die cut your window. I'm layering it on top. Uh, right, it does. I don't know. This one also was tricky because I masked, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a little bit of white underneath there and I blended, but unless you're taking it off, you can't tell. You can see that this cardstock is, or um, DSP is a lot darker on the inside than it is on the outside and it's just the one piece, but cute. Just not the same oh and i put love at first bite on this one so <laughs> if anyone needs some halloween cards let me know because as much as i say i'm not going to make them i make them every dang year um before i get into that my planner is on my desk because i am addicted to this thing but i just made a birthday and anniversary sheet and if you are ever looking to replicate kind of the floral spray that's on anything stampin up True Beauty is your stamp set. 
I just received it today. Couldn't wait to play. This one is actually from Artistically Inked, but it, it is almost perfect. And I, I've been thinking for years, we need to have these as stamps. So I'm putting that in there. So there's no excuse to forget birthdays. The only thing is there's not enough room. So I'm kind of thinking I might have to do like a flappy thing. Um, but there is an SU Planner group on Facebook and I shared this. Uh, I stamped something, didn't like it, so I covered it with a Memories and More card. I've got the craft supplies from the Cheerful Basket. I've got a picture of my two female dogs. My male is probably like, um, excuse me. And then my month at a glance. So I'm using it more and more. That card that I made, was it last week? I guess so. I didn't like it, so I cut the sentiment out and put it in my planner. So that is how this is going. And I've added my colors. The only color that I find is ghosting really bad is Mossy Meadow. The rest are okay, but I do prefer them stamped off. And I think that's all for that. I did, <laughs> in case you are wondering, hi Linda, uh, hi Kim. In case you're wondering, if, as a demonstrator, the Stampin' Up! keychain. It's a reason it costs as much as it does. It is significant. Like it is easily two inches across. It is heavy. And I thought it would make such a good charm, but it won't work. Not without scratching it all up and putting it on a thing here and then it hangs out too far and I'm sad. I'm gonna have to figure out a different kind of closure, I guess. Okay. So back to the card. Squirrel. We know this, right? Um, okay, so I have a piece of basic black. I'm wondering, maybe I should switch to my white. Will you get too much glare? I'm thinking because we're using black cardstock that the white background might be easier tonight. I hope we don't get too much of a glare. The mat is kind of right here if I need to bring it back in, but I think there's not enough contrast if I've got the black mat there. Okay, so if you are wondering, I use some of the new gold glimmer. This is, oh shoot, it's part of the, oh. Hi, yi, yi, yi. Hi, Carolyn. It is part of the Light to Glow suite. It is the Glimmer Specialty Paper, page 31. Uh, I am using the met metallic, metallic and shimmer paper. That is how I did the cat and the bats. So we don't have black glimmer paper, but if you are very strategic in how you use this, it can work. And then, like I mentioned, we are using Orchid Oasis, some basic gray and some basic black. So we've got the scary cute bundle and I've got the windows from the window wishes bundle. Love this one. And if you recognize that bundle, I shared this card. It was actually part of my card kit for last month. Sales could not have been slower last month. So the kits sold were, or earned, not so much. So I still have to make a video for this one, but it's a super cute fun fold. You can see the houses in the background. Got some vellum for the window, finished window pane on the inside and outside, and then that. So I will be making a video on this using different cardstock because I have to make the tutorial. So I figure you might as well benefit. If I'm going to make a video, it better be worth it. So for the window, you might be thinking, oh, you probably don't need both. But if I do both of these, it will give me the outline and it will cut away the inside. And then I will repeat that with my basic gray. Now I did use the timber embossing folder on my original card. We'll see if I go quite that far tonight because I don't want this to take all night. I'm kind of thinking I need an extra light. We're getting a lot of shadow. Okay, let's see. Will this make much of a difference? 
a little bit. We still get a tiny bit of a shadow, but I think it's better than it was. Okay, so I'm going to run that through. I can't really do much else at the same time other than masking paper. So to do this, I masked, there's so much to this. So I use the Starlet Punch to get this tiny little star, but if you don't wanna mess with that, or maybe you don't have this one because it wasn't the most popular punch, the new Witches, I have no idea what this is called, but the Witches hat has three stars. They might be a little big for the scale of this card, but they should work. We're using the Evergreen Border Punch, and if you don't have this one, it's amazing, I love it. So, <laughs> tip, do not punch your masking paper with this. It will get stuck every single time you punch. Uh, okay, so we can't do the gray part until we're done with this, but we can go ahead and die cut our little, would you call that a castle, a mansion? I'm just gonna call it a haunted house. We probably will need two, maybe three of those because the amount of inking I did on here anyways, um, the mask would have only held up for so long. I'm gonna take my moon out. Don't need a piece that's this big. Um, but it was also a matter of kind of playing around to get it just the way I wanted. So we'll see if I can get that done a lot quicker this time. But boy, was it fun creating it. Uh, so we need a row of trees we can probably do that with some of this extra basic black we need so for my windows you could go ahead and just color them with a gold marker I did end up doing that at the end just to add a little bit more gold but what I did was while my mask was still on I took my Versamark pad over top and then added some gold embossing powder so much masking on here but i thought if masking is the theme masking is what i am going to do so i'm going to try and keep the chit chat less because i need to focus so i am using my electric die cutting machine so it's off to the side you're going to hear a bit of a weird sound you won't see me for a minute, but it'll be fine. Yeah, I almost lost my moon. Okay, so there is one mat. I think I will probably go ahead and do a second one. And I need to do my window frame. Uh, <laughs> food fold? Where is your, uh, where's the fold? Yes, I think it's a haunted house too. Uh, thank you, cute card. Um, it is a top folding card. So it is four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half. I'm so disappointed that this is buckling. You probably can't see it quite as much as I can, but I may have to go in with like a die cut haunted house after and put it on top, which covers up so much of my masking. Anyways, uh, so for the window frame, I did not pop it up. I die cut, I think it's three of the window frames. I might as well use this one on the bottom. You can use this little piece for something. I mean, it actually cuts, it's got a bit of an embossed edge, so you could use it for a sentiment. Just make sure that you use uh, an embossing buddy before you try and stamp on that because there are fingerprints everywhere. There's static that's introduced from the plates. Like, you would not be happy with the outcome of your embossing if you did not use an embossing buddy. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna do two of the frames this time, I think. I think, I think. So I was going to do a poll. Asking if you wanted to see this card or using the new, um, oh darn it, what's it called? <laughs> 
uh, the happy birthday, what's it called? This birthday piggy, which is part of the Perfect Partners promotion, which includes, um, it has dyes for some really cute sets. So I ordered, I had not ordered the pig stamp set yet, but because it has coordinating dyes, there's the cutest little wagon ever. Um, but the Yeti bundle, well, now it's a bundle. Uh, the Yeti has dyes. I used them yesterday. So cute. Where is my window dye? <laughs> There it is, we'll keep those together. Okay, so I think I'm probably going to skip the timber embossing folder, but we'll see. What do you think? It kind of makes it, doesn't it? Dang it. Okay, I'll do the embossing. I am, should I? No, I won't adhere them first. Okay, so for the trees, I think I need a longer piece. I will use, I would love to use the masking paper, but I found that it was so thin with its backing paper that um, it just, it would get stuck in the punch and it was, to be honest, it was peeing me off. So we'll just use some black cardstock and I will tape it down. So if you have never seen this punch before, I love it. It gives you a gorgeous little line of trees. And I, instead of lining it up on the front, I actually line it up so I can see just a tiny little gap and then I punch. I find that if I don't do it that way, I end up with basically this, but going up and down. And it's so much easier to have the tree just a little bit closer than to have to go in and fix that. I know this is way more trees than we need, but uh, scissors. I get to the end of these lives and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just talked for an hour straight. And try as I might, trying to keep these lives to half an hour, this card cannot be done in half an hour. Maybe by some magician, but not me. Okay, so here is our moon. Should we try these stars and see if they're, I really think they're going to be too big, but... Maybe that little one will work. Can I get it where there's two? No. Okay, so I'm going to do the middle one here, which of course didn't come out. And then I will show you how I did the other one. I mean, it's not rocket science. I'm sure you could figure it out. That was the first time I've used that punch. Oh, thank you. Uh, with, oh, yeah. So I have a team bingo that I have been horribly delinquent in planning and trying to set a date. And of course, the bigger the team, the more the people, the harder it is to find one date that works for all or even most. Um, and I'm making some little treats to go with the bingo stuff and a make and take and just some little things and one of them is using the yeti so i can't show it to you because i know i have team members watching and i don't want to ruin the surprise should we put a bat this one i have a cat oh uh i am going to need do you see see the eyes oh yes so in this bundle we have the cat and i just Turns out I cut off his front leg. Whoopsie. Uh, we are going to put him up here and then I'm just going to cut a little piece of gold to go in behind so that he doesn't have no eyeballs. This way he has creepy gold black cat eyes. Should we do some bats? Let's do a couple bats. Now I'm kind of running out of room of where it's just black, but I can do it. So if you've been missing the black glimmer paper, this is a great way to be able to kind of cheat. I don't know what I'm going to do with all the like snow at the bottom of this, but lots of time, right? Okay, so we'll die cut these too quickly.
Whoopsie. So I had thought about bringing out my stamp and cut and emboss machine, which is just up there, but I also know I've got so many moving pieces to this that it was going to be really hard to get the room that I needed. So I know I'm cheating, but the amount of die cutting I do, my arms could not handle doing manual cranking anymore. Now in five minutes when I've lost all these pieces, <laughs> remind me where they went. Oh, uh, you want to see about bingo. Well, you know what? After we get it um, finally scheduled and everyone has their kits, I will share pictures. I'll take pictures before they get sent. I just don't want to spoil that surprise. This is a team appreciation bingo. This isn't one that my team have paid for. This is me thanking them. And it is long overdue because I had talked about doing it quarterly, but... Oh, I just can't. Okay, so kind of weird. He has no eyeballs, right? And if that little bit of like white or silver bugs you, you could probably cover it with the uh, basic black stamp and blend. Not going to cut off his leg this time. We're going to cut off the little part that attaches. And then his leg. I know he looks um, like... I feel like his tail should be three times bigger than it is. Like he has his back up. He is, he's on guard. So now I'm just going to take a little scrap. I don't keep a lot of scraps, but with glimmer paper, it always seems like such a shame to waste it. So we're just going to fit this in behind. I'll color in those couple of white spots. Come in here trim it down. If you are joining me for the first time, uh, you won't know that I jump all over the dang place. Uh, long before I knew I had ADHD, <laughs> I still did that. So it's not new. Uh, Linda says that it looks like a white dot on his nose. I'm covering covering it up. Now if you don't have the dark basic black, that actually could be his nose, couldn't it? Too late. I want him to be like an all black spooky cat hanging out in a windowsill. Okay, so now I will take my, this is Tombow, it's just in a different bottle. I'm just gonna add a little bit, kind of give him glue goggles. <laughs> if you will, and then we'll put that down and put this right on there. Now the last step I did was to draw lines in there so they actually look like eyeballs, but I will let this sit with a couple of blocks on it while I move on to the next thing. So right now this is way bigger than we need it to be, but I'm going to do that and then I'll come in and adhere my window after the fact. So it's bigger than we need, yes, but I would rather have bigger, whoops. My cat was not ready to move. Get on there. Now I gotta trim it a little bit more. If you don't wanna wait for glue to dry, you could probably tape it down. You could. <laughs> you know what we could do. Okay. Question. Thank you for sharing, Dawn. Uh, no, Linda says. Should we use one of the washi tapes and give him purple, green, or orange eyes? I've shown you now how you can do gold, but let me know in the comments. What do you think? Should we change it to one of these? Because those look very spooky. We're not going to do black because it'll just melt right in. Hi, Megan. So weird to say good morning at... 8 p.m., but good morning to you. <laughs> okay, so we've got our masking. You haven't missed much. I'm just basically getting all my parts and pieces ready here. We've got two of our little die-cut haunted houses. These will not stay, so I'm going to do this, and then you can see. Purple, green, orange. Island Heather, Granny Apple Green, 
uh, pumpkin pie. So let's start with this. I am going to start by putting my trees down and we'll kind of darken up that sky. So what I want to do is put a very little amount on my grid paper. And I say a little amount because I just want it to hold it still. I don't want enough there that it is going to impact my blending going to take I don't have a dedicated brush for each color I have one for each color family but I have um, like a neutral one I keep this for like night and navy and starry sky I've got a gray one I've got a black one lots of stuff so we are going to do actually two rows of trees so let's just tape these down hi Barbara uh, oh, no need to apologize, Megan. I totally get it. Okay, so we have, does someone want to count for me? We have one orange, two, three, three orange. Oh, I went too far. One green, one purple, two green. Uh... I don't want to go too high, but I don't want to go too low. I don't want to have these trees like competing for the foreground. Okay, let's use, we'll do tone on tone and we'll go Orchid Oasis. Okay, purple is coming up. I'd say we could do like one of each, but I, I really don't want to die cut all those cats. <laughs> Okay, now this isn't taped down, so I need to kind of hold it when I'm in that area. You could probably add a little bit of stamp and seal, or I wouldn't do a glue dot. Be well, you're not gonna see it. But if you were looking for something like seamless, a glue dot would not be it. It would leave a little mark. Okay, so we're going to get right into those little crevices at the bottom. And this is going to be kind of a twilighty sky. Now for my next row of trees, I don't want them to be like that. So what, I know that probably made no sense. I don't want them to be exactly like the last one was. So instead of using this one and just moving it over, I'm grabbing this one. We'll flip it over. Me. I don't want them to be the same. I'm back to my original one. Okay, so that's probably better. And then we'll darken up the trees in the background, but not completely. I don't want to completely lose them. I, I just want it to appear like they're further back. So I have not re-inked my brush. And it can be really hard to tell how much blending you've done. So if you are curious, just lift it up. Like, that's nothing. So I will add a little bit more. I'm going to start off of the edge. Now, this is probably like the second time I'm using this ink pad. And the first time was not for blending. So I don't want to go overboard. And I'm not too worried about the foreground because that haunted house is going to take up quite a bit of the foreground and worst case, we just come in and blend it some more. Ooh, that looks funny. <laughs> you see it? Say weird. Okay, so once I get this how I want it, I will take all the trees off and add a little bit more but they kind of look like they're very short skinny ghosty trees probably shouldn't have done it quite like that but it's a gamble doing a card like this that took quite a bit of playing around to get it the way i want on a facebook live thank you for sharing dean okay so i think orange was the winner but while i'm doing this if you want to give it another vote. I don't love that first row of trees. I should put it on the way the tape was, right? 
square right about there. So I did do quite a bit of ink blending on my first one, but it was already um, DSP. Like it was already Starry Sky. I don't, can you see these trees? They look like ghostly. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How am I going to fix this? Maybe I don't. Maybe I go in and do more. I don't know. Do I do more? Do I leave it? You know, when you think to yourself or you say out loud, what's the worst that could happen? And then you have to start over. <laughs> or you get a bad haircut and again, you have to start over. I don't love it, but I should have just stuck to my one level of trees. So. <laughs> Dave's home. Now, worst case, I could always turn this over, but I don't want to keep you all night. So, you know what? That's okay. It's it's looking okay. So now what I need to do is add my little haunted house. I'm thinking I need to die cut one more because I need one that has the haunted house with the outline, not just the haunted house. I will still need the two that I've already die cut, but I'm going to put this, it doesn't need to be right in the middle, but I need to have enough room that when I ink blend, I'm not getting it on the edges. So I'm just going to die cut this one more time. Elizabeth says a darker row, a darker blue for the one in the front. That could work. Um, so now what I need to do is decide where my little haunted house is going to go. And that's looking good. I know that this is so much masking paper. But I get a discount. <laughs> and I don't want to mess it. Oh, what am I doing? So <laughs> it's been a long week. It's Wednesday. Okay, this is self-adhesive. I don't need to tape it down. But what I would suggest is you find where it is. Usually it will start to spread, but if you can't find it, just use your take your pick tool, press lightly. I know I'm on my cardstock right now. So peel it apart. Oh, I was trying to peel the wrong side, that's why. That'll do it. Now, do not stick this onto your paper like this. Stick it to your clothes, your pants, whatever. <laughs> Well, this is a good look, right? It's on my pants. So now I've got some lint. When I take this off, it won't pull my cardstock. I want to be able to see my trees. I don't want to cover all of it up. So I want to make sure I have a good adhesion around here. I think I die cut it upside down. Yes, I did. Okay, well, we're definitely coloring the windows in because if I go to <laughs> do that, they're going to be in the wrong spot. So now what I need is my memento. If you wanted a different color, go ahead. And I will take my blending brush that is dedicated for darker colors. I'm going to come in and do this. So tip for you make sure that your masking paper is the right way up before you die cut it it's the first time that happened it can be obviously hard to tell which side is up so once you figure out what it is maybe put a mark on it I do kind of wish that the release paper was a different color okay that should be enough you don't want to oversaturate it because then it will do what that one did and it will start lifting. So now we can pull it back. We've got a gorgeous black coverage on this. I could probably hang on to it and use it again. I've still got the release paper. I could go through the hassle of putting this back on, but I'm not gonna do that. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to tape this on because it's backwards unless I die cut one more time with the thing backwards. But I think what I'm going to do, remember I told you that to get my windows, all I did was I used my Versamark pad, pressed it in, and then added gold embossing powder. This time, to make it easy, or also because I messed up, surprise, surprise, oh, I need a longer mic. I am going to take my little pen jar and I have a gold pen in here. I actually probably have a couple. So if you don't want to go through the trouble of embossing it and getting stray powder and all of the challenges that go with embossing, then just draw it on. So I'm going to just tack this down. I'm going to leave, I'm not tracing where the fence is. And when I did use Versamark, I covered up those holes in the fence so that I wouldn't get Versamark on them. You could also use a white gel pen, uh, the white chalk marker if you have it. Unfortunately, Stampin' Up! doesn't carry it anymore, but if you still have one, you could most definitely do that. The other thing you could do is die cut one more of these out of gold foil or glimmer paper and then just, I'd say painstakingly adhere them but it's probably not that bad. I'm gonna go over it a couple of times because I don't know what kind of coverage I'm going to get because it's not drying in between. But know that there are options. So just because I used first mark the first time doesn't mean there isn't an easier, more accessible way to do it. This one is significantly lighter but that's also because we used Orchid Oasis, not Starry Sky, like I did the first time. I can't believe I did that upside down. I mean, I can, <laughs> because it's me. But I, I had not done that before. So to get the size of the window, all we have to do is put this over top. Now, I really think I'm going to need something in the front here. There's just way too much blank space. What do you think? You know what? I'm just gonna add some more and we'll make it look like it's more of a landscape. I could make it kind of hilly. You know, I'm just going to go like this. It's going to be probably more harsh than I would have liked, but and then we'll add a little bit in here. Not too bad for time. I'm sure I'll come up with a million different ways I could have filled this foreground after the fact. I think I already threw my trees out. That is actually the upside, the upside down. Yes, trees are already gone. Just gonna go with it. So <laughs> I'll show you how to freestyle. Okay, so we don't need it to go right to the top. I am just going to kind of draw a line so that I know where to cut. There we go. It's not perfect, but when is anything I do ever perfect. So you see that I'm cutting off the sides first because if I cut off that mark, I can't see the other one. Sometimes there is method to <laughs> my madness. Other times, not so much. This also looks much different because I have Winka Stella on here. I've got, um, I added some little stars using my gold gel pen besides what I already had on there. So now I can take my scissors and actually what we could do is just kind of go like this, mimic that shape. 
doesn't need to be perfect. It's not going to be visible. As long as we can't see beyond it. A little bit more right there. So what do you think? Should I use the... Yes, I have Kitty that takes up some space. You're absolutely right. Should I emboss that with the timber embossing folder? I kind of feel like it loses something if I don't. I did think about using adhesive sheets for my windows, but they're not actually that bad. Now I've just... Dummy. <laughs> dummy, dummy, dummy. Okay, so now I'm going to line this up, and if I do emboss it, it's going to be fairly thick. Which is fine, it'll give it some more definition. What do you think? Yes to emboss. When in doubt, emboss. Okay, so let's put this away before I put my card in it, my hand in it, something in it. Clean those brushes later. Uh, timber. Timber, timber, timber. Doesn't really matter which way you put it in. It's going to look like wood grain no matter what. So for this, it's a 3D emb embossing folder. I'm just going to use my 3D plate and the platform. Nothing else, no shim, no clear plate. It's such a lovely sound, isn't it? The sound of saving my arms. So I think I probably would have preferred it the other way, but that's all right. Ooh, it looks so like haunted. Now before, oh yeah. Before I adhere that one, I need to make sure that they are going to stay together. Now I could use a little bit of washi tape, but I don't want to see it. So I'll just kind of dry fit it. We'll keep this there. And I find that this little glue tip, if you don't have um, a fine tip applicator, you could use your fine tip glue pen, which is a very similar idea. I just always found that uh, the fine tip glue took so long to dry. I do not have patience. So there's going to be a little spot right by my thumb that doesn't have adhesive, but that's okay. I love that this window bundle can be used for any occasion. Okay, so that one is down. I've got a tiny little bit of glue that seeped out. I'm going to take my, what is this, I block? No, E block and just leave that there for a few seconds while I adhere, put some adhesive on here, and then we'll put it back. So I opened registration yesterday for the Kindest Gnomes Craft and Connect. I will be designing those cards this weekend in addition to prepping festivity delivered. So for those of you that ordered the Santa's delivery, I am going to be sending out an email to give you a progress report. Um, but I am hoping, 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 one, that the tutorial is finished. Uh, I did my part. I know, who am I, right? Um, I've got everything I need. So worst case, I can prep my two cards. I just need to go in and check and see if Tiffany's done hers yet. And I would love to get them done by the end of the weekend. I don't know that that's realistic, but that is my current plan. Okay, so we are finally ready to adhere this. Where did you... Um, I got them from Amazon. They actually come in four or five. And I just put an elastic on here because this darn thing was driving me nuts. But you don't want to take it off because that is what keeps it closed when you're not using it. Okay, so now we can just glue this down. I don't need to be using the fine tip for this. I just found that my Tombow, like these bottles, were clogging too much. 
and then I mean you know you get them unclogged and it's like a glue storm it's everywhere so I thought a finer tip would be a good idea now you might see there's a little bit of the orchid oasis that you can see between the pane and the frame so if that bothers you because it does me I just went in with my black Stampin' Write marker and filled in that gap but it can be very difficult I would suggest that you do that before you would hear your frame you can see I've got one more on there I think that's probably because I got a little bit on my first basic gray frame do you see tiny little bit of the blue that you can see not the end of the world but if it bothers you like it does me I totally understand okay I think it was orange wasn't it so I'm just peeling off my gold glimmer let's do it like this okay so he can have purple eyes he can have green eyes which isn't all that different from the gold or he can have orange eyes so now that you've seen all three what do you think there's orange there's green I should say granny apple green <laughs> so creepy that he doesn't have eyeballs but this is perfect right or purple well you are deciding that what can I do I will adhere the stars and the moon and put my embossing folder away so for the stars and the moon I'm just going to use this fine tip glue it does still get that little snot dot on it but I have had much better luck where take your pick tool where did it go <laughs> Hi. my eyesight is not good enough for this I think I'm going to put it lower down I'm going to cover the fact that, that one tree looks ghostly release release too much glue okay I know I had it because I got glue off. oh there it is I got glue off of something else right now for the stars I wouldn't recommend trying to pick them up I would just put a dot of glue down oh that feels good to bend <laughs> uh, green shows up best but I still want orange purple purple <laughs> can someone do a quick count for me and let me know which one wins I mean I'd like in a way I'd almost like to give him multiple colored eyes but I think that would look weird okay so I'm going to put the biggest star lowest it doesn't have to be realistic right but it doesn't hurt we'll put one up there and we'll put a block down again and then we've got our couple of bats me and then like I said I'm just gonna take my gel pen and add some stars and I would do some that are bigger than others don't want it to look like freckles whoops I'm not sure this is the pen I used the other day I'll go over these windows one more time I do think we would have gotten a much brighter gold if I had gone over that with white first, but live and learn. I'll try adding a drop of water to your glue. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you, Melanie. Purple on Facebook. Now, in the same way that I did my castle backwards, my haunted house, um, the washi tape has to go on first. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I, if I were to put the sticky part where it needs to go he would have white eyes because this is the part that's sticky so what I'm going to do is I've got some black dimensionals which I never use 
How many of you have black dimensionals? Never remember to use them. When they first came out, I'm like, why? Why is this even a thing? And then I had a card that was needed to be all black. And I'm like, oh, now I get it. But I tend to forget that I have them. Okay, so I do still have a bit of glue residue down there from when I had my gold. So let's see if this works. Stay down. I think I'm going to have to use a white dimensional here because I don't have any large black ones. All the trials and tribulations, huh? <laughs> Judy says, Linda, neither one of us got it. Sorry. You're just going to have to make one where your cat has orange eyes. Or maybe I'll die cut another one. Uh, <laughs> just getting onto your live. Oh no, you had a storm. <gasps> Look how cute it is. Look at my dirty hands. That's from all of the flower stamping I did before I went live. Okay, so just kind of dry fit him, figure out where you want him to sit. I think I did have him on. He's going to be right on the frame this time because I have more foreground to fill. <laughs> and then stamp and write marker. I know this is much longer than I planned on, but I did say it was really involved, right? So take your stamp and write marker. You may want um, like a fine Sharpie. This is also on washi tape. It's not on the glimmer paper. Uh, let's see. We'll blend. Let's try the journaling pen. I know this isn't current anymore either. I wish they'd stop stop discontinuing things. I also don't want to push so hard that the tape doesn't stay where it's supposed to. What else have I got? A Copic? <laughs> I'm looking in my pen jar. That might work. You could probably use some of the new accents, but you would get a circle, not a line. That looks creepy. Bats and the inside. Okay, so for the bats, we have two little ones. I'm going to put them kind of just above the horizon. I should have probably cut two different sizes, but I did not. That is too much. So I find that if I have too much glue, I just take a little bit of cardstock, spread it just a little. I'm doing, making more of a mess than I need to. I'll just pick up a little bit of that. And we'll put his, the bigger part of his wing in there. So this one is kind of free, free to move. Ooh, it's so spooky. And for the inside, I have already cut my paper. I have not stamped on it. You definitely need Stamparatus. So now if you are limited for time or, I mean, we're, we're almost at an hour. Um, the heavy lifting has been done. It is the stamping of these little guys that's left. So what I did was I took these three, have them over there, and then I have this little guy with the lantern because it felt like there was a little bit too much white space. Although if you were writing your name down here, maybe you don't want that, but uh, do, 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 do. say boo and scary on. So we'll close that. Oh, I was thinking these were photopolymer. So because they are red rubber, we don't need that mat. I'm going to put my magnet up here so that it doesn't interfere. I'm going to grab my memento. Oh, I thank you so much. And then I rub it across, but then I also tap it because I don't want streaks. But I found that when I was doing this the other day, I needed to ink it about three times. I don't know that this makes a difference, but everyone has something like it, right? Jump on the bandwagon. Okay, number 
are too... Oh, my silicone mat is too far over. Is this guy getting the inking he needs? Not really. Okay, so because it's right in the corner, it ought to be fine. Look, it didn't even move. I hope. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll find out. Now, I should have a stamp case underneath here so that it doesn't put pressure, undue pressure, on the hinge. Do you think it stayed where it was supposed to? It did! I could probably do with one more, but I'm going to call that good enough. Close up the ink. Get rid of that. I've got some stamp and seal. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to the card first so that I give my stamped panel a minute. I probably could have gone ahead and adhered this earlier, but I didn't. So this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. It gives you a very nice tight margin. Don't smear, don't smear, don't smear. <laughs> And then this is three and three quarters by five so that we can see some of those dots because it would be a shame to put that DSP down there and then not be able to see it. So there we go. Which one do you prefer? Other than the fact that this buckled a little bit because there's just so much ink on the DSP. I mean, I'm loving the look of this, but I feel like the, I messed up those trees. I'm also going to add more stars and ouch sharp tweezers. I did go over my castle on the first one with Wink of Stella. That might be another reason that my paper is buckling, but let me know what you think. I hope this helped. You uh, can see how not to die cut your masking paper so that you do it upside down. Anyways, I want to thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next week, my friend. Bye!